What's up guys? Eli is back. We got a uh, collection video to do. I haven't done one of my vinyl videos in a while, um, so I figured I'd fucking do one of those. Um, in the back we have uh, Lamentations by uh, Solstice from the UK. Um, great, great epic doom metal if you're not aware of it. Um, I can't imagine anyone in the metal and not knowing who Solstice were, but uh, there you go. Um, anyway, pretty much... Um, I'm doing with my, my records the same thing I do with my CDs, just grab 10, um, you know, they are alphabetized. My vinyl, however, I haven't alphabetized my, my vinyl. I don't know why, I just never have. Um, probably because it's not as hard to navigate through my vinyl collection. I don't have nearly as much as I do, you know, CDs, but, uh, this is all, uh, just classic heavy metal right here. So for the old schooler type guys, this is, uh, you know, you'll enjoy this. Um, starting off with, uh, Dio, we rock single off of the uh, uh, Last in Line album. So we got We Rock in the, uh, the B-side. We have Holy Diver Live and uh, Rainbow in the Dark Live. So that's pretty cool. Um, not like, not anything that's uh, necessary, you know, but uh, it's just cool. Anything by Dio, obviously, you know, we're going to buy. Um, and I am, I am a very big Dio fan going, you know, I'm going to say way back. It may not be as far back as, you know, some of you guys, but it's in my life, it's pretty far back. Um, you might remember me showing this a couple months back, because I just, I haven't had this very long. I haven't even listened to it yet, but I've had it on CD since I was a kid. We got Dio, Holy Diver. This is the uh, recent re-release from Warner Brothers. I thought it was really recent, but I guess it's 2016. I don't know, I just randomly found it and thought it was new. But if you didn't see it the first time around, if you did, I apologize. Um, I doubt you care that much, but... Uh, Red, clear vinyl, so it's really nice looking. Um, got the kind of old Warner Brothers labels. Um, insert is pretty cool. It's got just a whole bunch of, uh, it's like a collage, <laughs> a Dio collage. How can we not like that in the back? So yeah, very cool. <clears throat> very pleased with it. I'm sure it sounds good, but I haven't listened to it yet, like I said. Next we have the debut Man of War album, Battle Hymns. Eagle with abs. Most badass eagle ever, right? America. Um, so yeah. I'm a big Man of War fan. I don't like everything they've done, but I still consider myself a fan. Um, it's just fucking... This is an old record. It's I think it's a, an original pressing. I've had it a long time. It's just black vinyl. With the uh, cool center ring. So yeah. Debut album from Man of War. I don't really need, I mean, most of this stuff here I really don't need to go into detail talking about because every fucking, everyone knows all this shit, but it's, it's awesome shit. It's in my collection, so I'm showing it. Got Metal Church, The Dark. Um, this is one of the, uh, one of the first, not the first, but like first, one of the first like five final records I ever owned. This is, I think this is, correct me if I'm wrong, I do like Metal Church, I'm not the biggest fan. This is their second or third album. I know it's one of those two. Um, which is about where I kind of stopped paying attention. I like the first three or four Metal Church albums. Nothing fancy in here. Fucking lyric sheet. Black vinyl. Nothing fancy. Old Electra stuff. But yeah, this is a good album. It is not their best, but it's still a very good album. I still listen to it to this day. Um, this one, this next one's super rough condition, but this is one of my favorite fucking recordings of all time. Probably my favorite EP of all time, rivaling the debut uh, first full Fade EP. But the Queen's of Reich EP, or Queen of the Reich, depending on which version you have, right? I think. But anyways, this is just legendary stuff. Um, I'm sure you all know Queen's of Reich. If you're not super familiar, this is their debut EP. This is the best stuff they ever did. Um, they went on to do some albums, uh, the next, you know, their first, like, four albums I really do love, but... They never, they never did stuff. I mean, their logo was cooler. They shouldn't have changed their logo. Um, just the style of metal that they played on this is just so much better. Even their debut full length that came out right after this, um, it just doesn't have the same feel. And they never recapt recaptured this feel, and it always bummed me out. I, you know, I wanted them to do something like this, and they really never did. So, yeah, nothing special in there, but man. What an EP this is. It, you know, this is one for the fucking, one for the books. Um, and a, a prime example of a band who 
I don't want to say they never lived up to it, but uh, they should have done more stuff like that. Next we have, fuck, I never noticed this was a promo copy. <laughs> I always knew it was kind of rough, but uh, we got Grim Reaper, Fear No Evil. I am also not the the uh, the biggest Grim Reaper expert, but this is, fuck, I don't know. It, I, I can't remember if this is their first, second, third album, I don't remember. But it's a good album. Uh, that first run that they that they had, uh, I think it's three albums. They were just all, um, all really, really, really fucking good albums. So you you, you with '80s uh, '80s Grim Reaper, you couldn't go wrong. Um, and if you don't know much about Grim Reaper, you know they're a traditional heavy metal band out of England. Um, I don't know when they started, uh, mid early to mid '80s. Um, I guess you could consider them like a new new wave of British heavy metal band, but I never really saw them. Uh, uh, kind of lumped into that, uh, into that, that, uh, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to call it a scene, but, uh, yeah, lumped into those bands. Whatever. They're from England, early 80s, great, great, great heavy metal. Just catchy, but yet heavy. Um, good musicianship, great vocals, soaring vocals. You, you just can't go wrong. Next, here's one that, I mean, it's almost like, why, why show this? <laughs> Judas Priest. Screaming for Vengeance, very rough. It's an original press, very, very rough, but it still plays and it still sounds all right. Um, <laughs> great album. It's not my favorite Priest album. It is a lot of people's favorite album. It's not my personal favorite. Um, it really isn't. I mean, it's got some great songs. It's got some of their best songs. I mean, by far. But, uh, yeah, for me, it's not my favorite. Um, for me, a lot of Priest albums, and I know, you know, a lot of people are going to call bullshit on this, but it's just how I feel. For me, I really love Priest. I have since I was a kid. I love a lot of their stuff, but they've always had songs that just didn't quite do it for me. They always kind of, like, they'd put it out on an album with some great songs, like some of the best songs ever in heavy metal, but then they'd have some kind of just, like, rock and roll type, uh, songs that just didn't do it for me. I mean, I was, if, I always wanted them to be more metal. Um, not to be something they weren't, but you know, take any album that they do, take, uh, take Electric Eye or the Hellion, um, you know, if everything sounded like that on this album, but you know, instead you've got songs like, like you've got another thing coming. Oh, and the, the title track, Screaming for Vengeance. I mean, that's, that's just metal as fuck, but, uh, you know, yeah, either you know what I mean or you don't, I don't really want to ramble on more if I'm not making any sense. Next we have, I have most of this band stuff. They didn't put out a, a whole ton, but uh, TT Quick, this is their debut recording. Uh, it's an EP if I remember correctly, five songs, yeah. Um, great stuff. Um, TT, TT Quick, this is a Megaforce, uh, uh, Megaforce uh, release. Um, this was a uh, traditional heavy metal band from New Jersey um, who were always pretty underrated to be, uh, to be honest. Um, they didn't really, ever kind of really get their due um they were pretty good i think they, they could have done more um one of these guys went on to play in uh that one band um fuck. whenever i want to think of something i can but anyways one of these guys went to play in a, a very popular crossover thrash band with members of anthrax and nuclear assault um so yeah one of these guys played nuclear assault Glenn Evans, drummer, and you might also know Mark Tornillo, or T Tornillo, I don't know how to pronounce it, the vocalist, um, went on to be uh, the singer in Accept, and now he's now been on like four albums or so, pretty much when Accept made their last comeback, uh, he, he's been their vocalist, and he's been kicking ass, doing a great job, great, great singer, really, and this is their, I think this is their debut full length, this is a, this is a promo copy, it's got the little stamp there, but uh, Medal of Honor, so, yeah, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not the biggest TT Quick, you know, expert. I do like them, though, and I think this is their debut full length. This came out on Island, so they kind of got signed to a bigger label. I guess they did, uh, I don't know, maybe they did get a big break, but they didn't really, it didn't really go anywhere. They didn't become stars, necessarily. Um, this came out in 86, but it's a good album. They did put an album after this. They have one album that I, that I, I heard, I don't own it, I didn't really care for it. It's kind of like kind of glammy sounding maybe that's where they went wrong but uh, anyways last one here 
There's the EP Exciter, Feel the Knife. I do love Exciter. I don't have a ton of their stuff, but I do love it. Um, this has got uh, side A, Feel the Knife, and then side B, it's got Violence and Force and Pounding Metal. Um, what can I say about Exciter? Just fucking... A lot of people will say Proto Thrash. This is a combat recording, by the way, from 85. A lot of people will say Proto Thrash, um, you know, Speed Metal, whatever you want to call it. I mean, Exciter are awesome. We're awesome. Old combat green recording, recording, label. Um, yeah. Classic Canadian Speed Metal. I wouldn't really call it Thrash, but they were kind of, I guess if you were to say Proto Thrash, they did inspire a fuckload of Thrash fans. Um, I mean, nine, nine out of ten brash bands, you know, from the 80s are going to cite Exciter as a major, major influence. And we're talking almost, almost like a Venom, uh, influence, almost, you know, like that, that big Venom-sized influence, or even Voivod, Exciter are just right behind those guys. So yeah, um, we, they're, they're a band that, you know, would we have thrash had we never had Exciter? Hard to say. Anyways, that's it, guys. Um, thanks for watching and shit. Um, I, I still have a lot of new stuff to show. Um, and I know I say it in almost every collection update video, but I, my new stuff is probably going to slow down a little bit, so, which is kind of cool. I need to stop spending so much money. I can get back to showing my uh, my collection, because I still have a lot to, lot to show. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another video uh, pretty soon, because it's going to kind of talk about... Um, kind of an endeavor that I might uh, embark on. It's it's an idea I've had for a while, and I think I might do it. So it's it's kind of cool. I'll tell you guys about it. Um, it's, it's music related. Um, yeah, I'll tell you about it in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, thanks for watching and subscribing and uh, all that you do. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk soon. Cheers.